네, 안녕하세요. 네, 저는 한국어로 하고 싶지만 네, 그, 그 정도 한국말을 잘 못해서 제가 영어로 발표하겠습니다. Um, so uh, my presentation today is looking at the impact of uh, dust deposition on um, the South Atlantic and Southern Ocean um, and looking at proxies for um, the impact of ocean fertilization and phytoplankton growth. Um, so obviously the, um, the uh, mechanism through which this is important is um, the iron hypothesis in which uh, the iron which is contained in dust um, is deposited in um, these uh, nutrient limited areas of the southern ocean which uh, stimulates phytoplankton growth um, which may uh, then sequester carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and deposit it uh, to the sea floor. Um, so uh, I was particularly looking um, at uh, the dust um, source areas in South America, so um, particularly in the uh, southern part of um, Patagonia. Um, and so from there you can see that the dust is uh, emitted um, uh, with the westerly winds, so it goes towards the east and into the southern ocean. Um, you can also uh, see um, that uh, in that area to the south east of uh, South America of Patagonia, that uh, the area in this diagram, which is marked with orange uh, and red colors, uh, these are heavily uh, high nutrient, low chlorophyll, so iron limited uh, areas of the um, Southern Ocean. Um, and so therefore we would expect that dust emissions coming from Patagonia um, could have uh, an impact in removing the iron limitation uh, in these areas of ocean. Um, so uh, this diagram again shows in a little bit more detail. So we have that dust source in Patagonia. Um, we have uh, the rough limit, the northerly limit of the um, heavily high nutrient, low chlorophyll area of Southern Ocean. Um, and uh, we traveled to South Georgia. Um, so the subantarctic island, um, which is heavily glaciated, and we traveled there in order to retrieve an ice core so that we could uh, look for uh, dust deposition, um, but also the um, ocean primary productivity response. Um, so this is um, a, a schematic uh, showing um, the experimental design um, and the hypothesis behind it. Um, so at point one, um, we expect the dust emissions from Patagonia um, and that dust um, could be uh, uh, entrained and transported um, directly to South Georgia um, at point four and deposited in the ice core. Um, but along the way, we would also expect to see um, dust deposition uh, into the Southern Ocean. So that's at point two um, where we, if there was um, iron deposit in the ocean, our hypothesis is that we would see a phytoplankton response. And some species of phytoplankton uh, emit uh, biogenic sulfur compound, so uh, dimethyl sulfide, um, which uh, is uh, the only um, uh, precursor to uh, methyl sulfonic acid. Um, and that would then be deposited in also in ice cores in South Georgia. Um, and so the methyl sulf sulfonic acid could be used as a proxy uh, for uh, biological activity, uh, phytoplankton blooms uh, in the Southern Ocean. And we would look to see if that correlates uh, with um, iron, uh, which is uh, contained in dust emissions from uh, Patagonia. Um, so uh, this is a high split plot, which shows um, in the uh, time period uh, around just before when the core was collected. So we, we collected the core in October 2015. Uh, you can see over the previous uh, couple of years, um, both in the Southern Hemisphere summer and winter, that the predominant uh, wind, the, uh, I guess the, the source area for wind, which uh, reaches uh, South Georgia um, within 72 hours is predominantly um, to the west and in that area of southern Patagonia. 
Um, this is just a satellite image which shows again that this area um, of the Southern Ocean does experience phytoplankton blooms uh, also. And you can see those just to the uh, east of um, the Falkland Islands there. Um, and so uh, we, as I said, we traveled to South Georgia uh, and we skied um, up the glacier to our core site, which was at an altitude of about 1000 meters uh, on the uh, plateau of South Georgia, um, a relatively stable area of ice um, where we hope to be able to get a good ice core. Um, and so we extracted a 15 meter ice core, uh, which was then uh, measured and weighed and processed uh, on top of the um, ice cap before being transported back to the laboratory for analysis. Um, so this is uh, some data from the ice core. So uh, the top two uh, graphs, so uh, A and B, um, A shows the iron concentration in the ice core and B shows the uh, MSA, the methyl sulfonic acid um, concentration in the ice core. Um, and you can see that there is um, some correlation uh, between uh, those two values. So um, we can see there is, does appear to be a relationship, um, which is a significantly statistic statistically significant relationship um, between uh, iron concentrations and MSA concentrations in the core. Um, we can also see uh, in the uh, graphs below, C, D, E, and F, these are um, proxies uh, not in the core, but uh, remotely sensed or measured proxies. Um, and these proxies uh, show the seasonal nature um, of the factors that also might affect chlorophyll concentrations. So C shows the chlorophyll concentrations in an area of the Southern Ocean uh, upwind of the core site. And you can see that there appears to be a roughly seasonal nature um, where there are greater concentrations of chlorophyll in the Southern Hemisphere summer and lower concentrations in the Southern Hemisphere winter. Uh, we can also see um, the amount of radiation that the area receives in D. Again, it's seasonal. Um, we can see sea surface temperatures in F, again, seasonal, and uh, temperatures at a monitoring station um, at King Edward Point, where there's a scientific uh, base. Um, again, we see a seasonal um, temperature pattern. So in our uh, core data in A and B, we uh, were able to create uh, an age model by matching the seasonal fluctuations um, in MSA to the seasonal fluctuations that we see in uh, the other proxies, temperature proxies, and also chlorophyll concentrations. And we also, um, you'll see that our core record for iron and MSA finishes at a depth of about six and a half meters. Um, and, sorry, thank you. Uh, six and a half meters. Uh, and this um, is because uh, there appeared to be an unprecedented period of warmth, uh, which was detected at the scientific station at King Edward Point, uh, which caused soluble uh, elements in the core to uh, be um, dissolved and removed below this point. Um, and so we, we trace that event to um, in the record to the 17th and 18th of February. And so we believe that is the bottom of our six and a half meter core record, which we can use for alignment. Uh, you can also see there's a spike in uh, iron and MSA concentrations um, at around July or August in 2015. Um, and so we wanted to, this was the strong, most strongly correlated area of the core. And so we wanted to see if we could identify a specific dust event uh, that might have caused this. Um, and we were able to find in satellite imagery um, and remote sensing of um, uh, atmospheric uh, particulate concentrations um, and also uh, ocean chlorophyll, um, an event which was a dust emission from Patagonia on the 16th of August, uh, which we could then trace uh, across and passing uh, south of South Georgia. Uh, and then a few days later, um, three to four days later, uh, we saw a, um, an increase in the chlorophyll concentrations. And we know that um, phytoplankton usually responds on the order of three to four days um, after uh, fertilization occurs. And so we believe that this event uh, that we see in the record uh, is this event, which we can also track uh, using remote sensing. Um, so 
this uh, is potentially important because um, of fluctuations in dust emissions from um, South America. And so um, we also retrieved a peat core uh, from South America to look at how dust emissions might have changed over the past few hundred years. Um, and so we retrieved uh, a core uh, from a peat bog in Tierra del Fuego. Um, and this core allowed us to look back um, about three and a half thousand years. Um, and during that three and a half thousand year record, uh, we were able to see that um, at the top of the core, um, so in the past 180 years or so, that there has been a substantial increase, roughly um, a doubling or so of uh, dust emissions detected in the core site in Patagonia um, over the past 180 years. Um, and so uh, from that, that actually roughly uh, links in with um, some other research uh, which I've done, which has found that uh, since the um, Industrial Revolution, so since um, about 1750 or 1800, um, dust emissions around the world um, have roughly doubled um, as a result of um, anthropogenic activity uh, and land disturbance. And so this finding is uh, roughly in line with uh, other global findings um, about increases in dust emissions. And so um, what, what this uh, study uh, showed was that not only is there, um, there appears to be a link, a statistically significant link between dust events um, and phytoplankton response uh, in the Southern Ocean, um, so we can see that uh, I guess that can be monitored on a continuous level um, and at an event scale. Um, we know, as we saw, that the, um, the seasonal temperature changes um, and other seasonal factors tend to uh, shape the overall chlorophyll concentrations, um, which are seen in the Southern Ocean at that time, but that uh, these individual dust events do appear to have uh, an important uh, effect in triggering certain large scale events. And so, as we also see an increase in dust emissions from Southern Patagonia over the last 180 years, um, there's a chance that uh, we would expect to have seen a greater uh, productivity in the Southern Ocean in the uh, post industrial period. Um, and so, therefore, um, at the same time as we have been increasingly um, emitting carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, uh, we have also, um, through dust emissions, uh, been stimulating a mechanism to increase um, the withdrawal of a, the um, downtake of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere into the ocean um, through this uh, phytoplankton activity. Um, and so uh, that has interesting implications for the future, depending on uh, how we um, envisage or how we predict uh, that dust emissions may increase or decrease in the future.